Hallelujah. Say we are moving on. Let me hear you say we are moving on. No, say it like I said it on. We are moving on. Amen. First Timothy chapter number six. Timothy chapter 6, 1 Timothy chapter number 6. 1 Timothy chapter number 6. I'm reading verse 12. Oh, who sat ala maye de bosatakaya. Fight the good fight of faith. Fight the good fight of faith. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Whereunto thou art also called, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. I'm going to read that again. He says, fight the good fight of faith. It's a good fight of faith. He didn't say fight with the devil. Now listen, listen, and this is very, very important. You've got to catch it. In no place in the Bible does God tell us to fight the devil. Hello? He's never told us to fight the devil. Before Jesus came, we couldn't have fought the devil anyway. We would have been defeated. When Jesus came, he was the one who fought the devil and gave us the victory. He defeated the devil and gave us the victory. So, he's never told us to fight the devil because the devil has been defeated already. We don't have to fight him. Now there's a difference between what we read in Ephesians chapter number 6 when it tells us we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities, powers and so on and so forth. The word chosen for wrestling there means an attempt to sway one away from the mark. So the devil tries to push us away from the mark. And he does it through several methods. And so as we progress, we find that the enemy is there, but this is not a fight with the enemy. The enemy uses some other strategies to get at us. So God tells us what to do. He says the weapons of our warfare, in 2 Corinthians 10 chapter, when you read from the third verse, says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, that, that, that means not man-made. But says they are mighty through God. Not through men. But through God. To the pulling down of strongholds. Now what does he mean by strongholds? Listen, this is so important. This is not another interpretation of it. This is the interpretation of it. Now there are times that we can liken one part of God's word to several other areas for example maybe we are teaching on the woman that had the issue of blood and how she demonstrated her faith to touch the hem of the master's garment now we can we can look at all of that and then try to gain something from there and apply it to other life's situation, maybe about our job, maybe about um, family, 
finances and so on and so forth. But the primary, the primary story of that woman, the primary interpretation of that woman's life there has to do with how a woman got her healing from God. Do you get it? Then anybody can learn something out of it. In the same way, when he says to us that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, the primary interpretation, the primary meaning of the strongholds has to do with theories, ideas that you have had in your life for long, ideas that society has given to us, ideas that men live by around us, theories that they have. Are you hearing this? These things we have to fight with weapons that are spiritual. For example, in the medical profession, you find that there are certain things that you already know because of your training. You know that there is a tumor in that body and you know it's got to be cut out. Your medical training has told you this fellow is going to die in two months time because of this and that and the other. You know these theories. Now in the medical world, those who are medical doctors, nurses and the likes, including the patient, they all know this to be a fact. But then you come in among them. You would have to use the weapons of Almighty God to crush those theories. To be able to have a miracle among them. Can you see that? Because these theories are strongholds. There's just no way anybody's going to interpret it to say, well, this man is going to get well. They don't think he's going to get well. Every natural element shows that he's going to die. He can't leave. But you come in with the weapons of God. He says they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Casting down imaginations. You see that? Now already through those theories, through those strongholds that you have, you already have imaginations. The fellow can see himself going to the grave. He can see his funeral service. He can see people gathered about him. He can see all of that and he begins to ride his wheel and says, well, give this to so-and-so and do that for this and that. And he's doing all of that because this is his imagination. Sometimes you can imagine yourself failing. You can see yourself drowning because all the businesses around you that are just like yours are going down the drain. You can imagine it. You can see it. But the Bible says the weapons of our warfare are mighty through God for the casting down of imaginations. These imaginations will haunt you night and day. You cannot sleep without seeing them. And the more you imagine them, the more fear grips your heart. But the Bible says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They are not man-made. They are not ordinary. Hallelujah. It says, but they are mighty through God. Through God. And I told you some time ago, every time you see God in the scriptures, particularly in the New Testament, because there in the New Testament we have been given all the revelation of both, of all three of them, the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. We have to know what we can apply in the circumstances, in the contextual analysis, to know which of them is applied there for our good. So we can see that he's talking about the Spirit. And we can see he's talking about the Word. Because the Father, we cannot use the Father here. We cannot use Jesus here. And the only way we apply the power of Jesus is through his Word and through the Holy Ghost. Because the Word is here with us. The Holy Ghost is here with us. So we say, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through the Word. To the pulling down of strongholds. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through the Holy Ghost. To the pulling down of strongholds. So through the speaking of the, 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 the spiritual language, talking in tongues, and through the speaking of the written words, quoting it, 
releasing it from our spirits we will pull down strongholds we will cast down imaginations and then he says and bringing down every high thing that exalted itself above the knowledge of God hallelujah and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ you see how powerful the Word of God is how powerful the Holy Ghost is in our lives how we can walk in triumph every day that we live in this world hallelujah so that's why Jesus says, fight the good fight of faith fight the good fight of faith he says lay hold on eternal life now let's look at it again in first Timothy in chapter number six we're looking at verse 12 he says fight the good fight of faith lay hold on eternal life now I want to ask you a question where is eternal life for you to lay hold on it how many of you have seen eternal life and you put your hand on eternal life talk to me where is eternal life where does he where does he live have you found mr eternal life talk to me but he says lay hold on eternal life how can you lay hold on it all right how many of you have eternal life hey come on now how many of you have eternal life I don't I didn't say how many of you are going to have it how many of you have eternal life brother if you're born again you have eternal life that's what it means to be born again if you don't have eternal life you're not born again and if you're not born again you don't have eternal life I mean if you've been born into this world by a woman you have a human life if you're born of God you have eternal life thank you Lord Jesus <laughs> hallelujah I know what's ringing in somebody's head right now for God to love the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have he says shall not perish no didn't say shall not he says should not should not perish but have eternal life but Jesus said that before it was possible for man to receive it after he died and God raised him from the dead it became possible to receive eternal life so the Bible says we are partakers of the divine nature being born again not of corruptible seed but of incorruptible by the Word of God that live it and abide it forever of his own will begat he us with the word of truth hallelujah this is begat he us didn't say shall beget us but begot he us we are already born of God thank you Lord Jesus so we have eternal life John said I write to you that you may know that you have eternal life he didn't say that you shall have it he said that you may know that you have it okay let me just show that to you because someone is wondering where, 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 where is that I wish you'll quote it you say, how do you know? I just knew. First epistle of St. John, chapter number five. Thank you, Lord. I'm glad I have a Bible. Where would I have been? Thank God I went to school to learn to read and write. My God, that's a blessing. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Think about it. If we didn't know how to read or write, and somebody said that's what's there in the book and we said really every letter will look like a picture <laughs> first John first epistle of st. John chapter 5 hallelujah to glory to his name forever hallelujah. chapter 5 and it's from verse 13 oh glory to God Woo -hoo. you know why I'm excited let me show you something you know what God does he sets a bush on fire and when he sets a bush on fire he gets your attention 
And so you come. He says, there's a bush on fire. I want to go find out what, what's burning. And so the wonder is there before you and you look. But then God doesn't even talk about the bush. He doesn't even talk about the fire. He speaks from the fire and he says, Moses. Hallelujah. He speaks his word. And from then on, Moses doesn't need another bush on fire. Moses takes the rod of God in his hand and moves. Doesn't ask God for a sign anymore. He uses the rod to perform signs. He now produces signs. What am I talking about? You know, I was just looking at you and a laughter came from my spirit. What was it? Because a lot of you, maybe because of one need or the other, you came to this ministry. Maybe. Maybe someone invited you. Maybe you were sick and you needed healing for some reason. You were attracted to the ministry and you came. Well, that was the bush on fire. That was the bush on fire. Now you've come and God's calling your name. He doesn't put the rod in your hand anymore. He gives you the Holy Spirit and puts the Holy Spirit right inside you. And now you are performing signs. You don't need a sign. You perform signs. The world needs a sign. And you are the one producing signs for the rest of the world. Hallelujah. That's why when you come in here, and like some of you, today is your first time. When you come into this place, you begin to learn the Word of God. You gain from the Master's words. You learn it. You receive it into you. Hallelujah. And you begin to walk like Jesus and live like Jesus. Amen. Amen. There are people who never think like that. All they want is to get a miracle. And when they get a miracle, they go and say, Glory to God, I got a miracle. Well, um, I had this problem, I had that problem, and God has, he has solved my problem. Praise the Lord. And then they just go. Then they have another problem. And so they're looking for where to go and get it again. And then they get it, and they say, Glory to God, I, I was here two years ago. Now I had another problem. The first one was on the right side, and this new one is on the left side. And... And I came for a miracle and I got it. Thank you, Jesus. Then two months later, it's not the right side. It's not the left side. It's the underside now. <laughs> so they go again and they get another miracle. Thank you, Jesus. I've received three miracles in three years. God's not happy with you. I can tell you from the book. He's not happy with you. Can I tell you something? Do you know that God Almighty is not performing miracles in reality? When you receive a miracle here, God's not doing something. He doesn't do anything new for you to get a miracle. He, he's not working. He's looking at you. So when you receive a miracle, you're not receiving something he's just done. You're getting something he did in the past. So God is not impressed because you got a miracle. Because he, he ain't done nothing yet. Can you see that? So it's no proof that God is happy with you when you get a miracle. It doesn't mean he's happy with you. Are you hearing me? Doesn't mean he's happy with you. The Bible says without faith, we cannot please God. It is impossible to please him. And that's the reason your faith keeps wavering. That's why your faith keeps wavering. Today you pray, you believe God has heard you. Tomorrow you pray, you think God is not hearing you. 
Then the next time you pray, you feel like maybe you need to fast for God to hear you. Then you fast and then you feel like He's heard you. Then the next time you fast again, it looks like God's not hearing you. So you want to add more days to your fast because one day is no longer enough because He used to hear you one day. Now He takes three days to hear you. So you're going to have to do this maybe seven days. So your life is unstable. God's not happy with you that way. Look at the Bible. Why was God happy with a, with a prostitute like Rahab? How come? Why was God happy with a swindler like Jacob? How come? Read your Bible. How could God be that way? What kind of a God is it? Because those who think that they are heard of God because of their righteousness. What do you mean their righteousness? Let me show you something. See, if we don't know the Word of God, we fall into diverse problems with God. We live in a way that is unstable because we don't know the Scriptures. If you didn't know the Bible, you wouldn't know when you are wrong. So you'd need to know the Word of God. Now, if I pray thrice every day, and I fast once every week, and I give my offering to my tithes, and so I believe, that Papa God is my friend. After all, I win souls every week. I give my tithes and my offerings. I fast every week. And I read my Bible and my rhapsody every day. I pray thrice a day, a total of five hours every day. I mean, God ought to hear me. If there's any, if there's, if God will hear anybody, if God will listen to somebody pray. <laughs> you know what? That is what it is to trust in my righteousness. You may not even go that far. You may live a terrible life and then now you need something so you set this week, you sanctify this week unto the Lord. This one week, I will set myself straight. And so you start fasting and praying because there's trouble and you want to ask God for something. So now you are holy. It's time to ask God to do it. So you ask God to do it. Why? You look at your life in the last seven days and you say, mm -hmm, I qualify for it. <laughs> You're wrong. Do all of those things because you love him. Don't do them to make him do something for you. For the Bible says, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He didn't die for us because we were good. He didn't die for us because we were kind. He didn't die for us because we were righteous. He didn't die for us because we were doing anything nice or right. He died for us because he loved us. So when you do anything, do it because you love him. Not because you want him to do something for you. Did you hear what I said? Now that's very important. Discover the reality of your new life in God. Now that you are born again, find out this exciting reality about who you really are.
the inheritance for you, your ability in God, and your true identity, and live the supernatural life God has planned for you. Get this exciting teaching series by Pastor Chris. Life in Christ, the new Superman. To place your orders, please call any of the numbers now showing on your screen or visit our cyber store at www.christembassy.org Available in audio and videotapes. Anyway, I was going to show you a scripture. I hope you've read it yourself. You've seen it already. Uh, um, First John chapter 5 and verse 13. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that ye may know. Glory to God. That ye may know. Oh, oh, oh boy. Oh dear God. Sometimes I wish I had a louder voice to shout this thing. I've heard some preachers preach and they can shout real good. Sometimes I'd say, oh dear God, I wish I could shout like that. If I shout like that, I might take hot water to press my neck after the service. (laughs) But I try my best. Oh dear. He says, I have written to you, you, you who believe in the name of the Son of God. He said, I've written to you that you may know that you have eternal life. He said, I want you to know you got it. You are not going to get it. You will not have it after prayer. You will not get it when you get to heaven. He says, I want you to know that ye have eternal life. And that ye may believe. You are not going to believe in heaven. Your believing is here. He says, I've written to you that you may know that you have eternal life. Sometimes I get some little trouble come to my body. And I say in the name of Jesus, I have eternal life. Eternal life walks in me. Glory to God. That's what beats beneath my chest. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I have eternal life. And by the power of that eternal life, everything of the devil must die. Stay up what God has given you. Stay it up. When headaches come, when fever comes, doesn't matter what it is. There's a growth in your body. Some symptoms of some terrible problem come into your body. Remember you have. He says, I've written to you that you may know that you have. I want you to know that you have. Okay, so if you know you have it, Hey, what does that mean? That's life from the dead. If you have eternal life, that's life from the dead. I refuse any tumor in my body. I refuse to have diabetes. I cannot have diabetes. I cannot have an ulcer. I refuse to accommodate cancer. Are you hearing me? I will not accommodate them because eternal life is in me. In every fiber of my being. Every bone of my body, every cell of my blood, shout amen, somebody. Hallelujah. That you may know that you have eternal life. You have it. You have it. I said you have it. You have it. It's in you, glory to God. It's in you, glory to God. I said it's in you. It's in you. Are you hearing me? It's in you. I have eternal life. You know what? Maybe because we use the term as we find the King James Version, eternal life. Sometimes people don't understand what he's talking about. Eternal life is the God type of life. It is the God life. Do you understand? It is the life that God Almighty has. There is animal life. There is plant life. But there is the God life. That's what he's talking about. That we have the God life. No wonder we cannot be defeated. No wonder we cannot fail. Go read of God. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. That's the meaning. Hallelujah. That's the meaning. That's what he says when he tells us ye are of God, little children. That doesn't mean ye are on God's side. 
when it says ye are of God understand the Greek rendering doesn't say ye belong to God no when it says ye are of God it means ye hail from God your origin is in God that's the nature that you have now ye are of God little children you have overcome all your adversaries be they men or spirits you have overcome your adversaries you have overcome your adversaries because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world they shall come out against you one way but they shall flee seven ways glory to god shout hallelujah wow i refuse to be defeated the lord is my shepherd I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid of? Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. It says, do my enemies. And my foes, is when my enemies and my foes came up against me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. They stumbled and fell. They may be standing and looking at me, but I'm telling them they stumbled and fell. I have to fulfill God's word about me, and they will fulfill God's word about them. They will fall. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm a success. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I have eternal life. He says, fight the good fight of faith. When you get healed, for example, and you say, thank you, Jesus. I'm healed. I'm healed. I'm healed. You're happy. Glory to God. Now you get home. And while you're at home, the devil shows up. Are you really healed? He may not show up immediately. He may let you go around and testify. He may let you go from house to house and testify. You may call somebody up on the telephone and say, guess what? I've been here. One week later, if it lasts that long, the devil shows up. Are you really here? Are you sure you're here? Then he throws his missiles. No wonder the Bible says, Take unto you the shield of faith, wherewith he shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. He says, Take unto you the shield of faith. He throws his little missile, and you get something on the back. Oops. Then you feel that pain. It's the symptom you used to have. You are familiar with that symptom. It's come back, isn't it? The devil said, Well, yeah, you said you're here. Aren't you feeling something now? He said, uh, uh. Then he pushes it a little more. Whoops! Ah! Then, are you still here? Um, uh, Why are you still doing that? He throws another one. Bush! devil says oh you don't understand what's going on push <laughs> then one to the stomach oh uh. then they bring you lunch you you had stopped eating before you got healed when you got healed you started eating everything now the symptoms have come back and so they bring you lunch they bring you food and you say the reason you're saying no is because old symptom, old brother symptom has come back. No. Any problem? Uh-uh. The devil says, uh-uh. All right. <laughs> Another one. Push. They say, is there something wrong? Mm-mm. <laughs> Eat now. 
you take a little and you let it go. Ah, won't you eat? Mm. The devil says, all right. He calls another little demon. He says, throw another one. <laughs> Boosh. And then you say, I don't want to confess negatively. <laughs> but something, my stomach. Now you begin. The devil says, uh-huh. Now you're talking. If you are sick, say you are sick. Just say you are sick. Please, can you call the pastor? Or inform the healing school? Or you might even be ashamed. In fact, when you want to call them, the devil says, don't you call nobody. After you said you were healed, if you call someone and they're going to say you're not healed, you testify. Do you remember you testify? Oh, yeah, 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 I testify. Then now you start running from everybody. When brother so-and-so comes to your house, say, who is it? Is it from Christ? And I say, ah, yeah. <laughs> Tell them I'm not at home. <laughs> Let me tell you something. You are being invaded from outer space. But you have to understand that they are all defeated. Yes. Are you hearing me? Yes. He says, fight the good fight of faith. Yes. What is the fight of faith? The symptom has come back. Bosh! You say, I am here. Yes. Listen to this. What does it mean when you talk like this? You are not speaking about, you are not testifying to your feeling. This is the glory of God. You are not testifying to your feeling. You are not testifying to your circumstances. Only babies testify to their feelings. When they feel good, they say, I am well. When they don't feel good, they say something is wrong. No, when you start learning the word of faith, you don't testify to your feeling. You testify to the word of God. Because your anchor is in God's words. Are you hearing me? You say, I am healed. He multiplies the symptoms. You declare, by whose stripes I was healed. If I was healed, I am still healed. The devil cannot stand that. That's what the Bible says in James chapter 4 verse 7. Resist the devil. And he will flee. Keep resisting. Why does he say resist? Because something is pushing against you. That's the only way you resist. This thing is stable. If I'm pushing it, it is not resisting and I am not resisting. Why? Because it's not pushing against me. But if it were pushing against me, and I counter that force by applying another force against him, then I am resisting him. So what he's telling us is, the enemy is coming out against you. So what? Resist the devil. He tells you you are not healed. You declare in the name of Jesus, I have been healed. If I was healed then, I'm still healed now. Let me tell you something about divine healing. That's very different from medicine. When God heals you, what actually happens is this. I just told you, God really doesn't do anything in heaven. The healing is in the, is in the, in the earth. What happened was, you received healing into you. By faith, you got a hold of God's healing power. And transmitted that thing into your body. And produced results. Now that thing is in you. It's still there. For the gifts and calling of God are without revocation. So it's there. So when you don't feel healed anymore, you must not testify to your feeling. You must testify to the power that you have received into you because it is still there. It will not leave. It will remain there. That's the reason God can judge you and say, what did you do with my healing power? I gave it to you. You say, Lord, uh, yeah, I, I was healed one day and then uh, well, three months later I found out I was not healed. God will say, no, the gifts and the calling of God are without repentance. That was a gift of healing administered into you. And when you received it into you, it caused healing. It does not leave because I never take back what I give. <laughs> Have you heard me now? If God ever healed you of something, that healing is still in there. Because it does it through the gift of the power of healing.
it remains in you. So if you have lost that healing, remember this, you have not lost the power. Testify to that power. When you testify to it, it will come up. How? Look at salvation. Salvation has been given to all men as a gift. The Bible says the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So eternal life is available. When you confess Jesus Christ as Lord of your life, believing that God raised him from the dead, automatically eternal life is imparted to your spirit. You receive salvation into you. Not because God is doing it over there. Because it's already done. And what you did was to act by faith and appropriate that salvation to your spirit. Now, if later on you go back to sin, does it mean that God's salvation has been thrown away? No. The manifestation of that life is what you have not allowed to gain the ascendancy in you. So what do you do? Awaken it by confession, by faith's proclamations. You declare, I am a child of God. I believe in Jesus Christ. I declare that God raised him from the dead and he's Lord of my life. And I declare that I belong to Jesus. As you do that, the word of God will be awakened in you. Are you hearing me? And right away, the life of God will be manifested in your body. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I can never be a failure. The Bible says he revealed his secrets to his servants. His secrets have been revealed to us. Put these secrets to work. You will never fail. Put these secrets to work. It doesn't matter where you find yourself. Tell somebody I know who I am. I have not lost my identity. I know who I am. A lot of times men come out against us, human beings. And they tell us, Oh yeah, I heard you said God gave you a job. Is it true? Is it really, really true? I heard you said you are now living in prosperity. Is it true? Okay, borrow me some money. <laughs> Is it really true? I heard you said you are here, but you don't look here. Oh, are you really here? Is that thing really true? Let me tell you a story about a woman. She was healed of cancer in a, another meeting. Not from our ministry, but in a, a Benny Hinn's meeting. And uh, this woman was healed of cancer. When she was healed, she went back to the doctors and they could not trace the cancer in her body. They said, what in the world happened? You were supposed to be dying. How come? We can't find the cancer. So she had new medical reports showing that the cancer had completely disappeared, miraculously disappeared. So she kept going to their church in Florida. For six months, she attended the church. And in those six months, her hair had grown back. She had lost her hair because of cancer. Her hair had grown back. Her strength had returned. She had become so normal and healthy. And of course, a wonderful disciple of Jesus Christ. Six months and she was growing. But there were those at home who kept telling her, so because of miracle, you have left our home church. So because of your healing, you are now in another. Must you join them? Can't you just get healed and come back home? When people got healed, did they have to follow Jesus? Then they go back home. After all, one day Jesus healed somebody. Man said, I want to follow you. Jesus said, Go back to your home. Do you have to go to their church? Six months we've been looking for you. You wouldn't even come to church. The pastor wants to see you. So she went to the pastor. She went to Benny Hinn and she said, I want to go to my former church. 
They know I'm healed, and I know, I know I'm healed, and everything is all right, and everybody knows everything is all right, everybody's cool. I want to go back home to our home church. And he said, hey, you've been here six months, and in six months you've grown like you never did. In six months, everything's been all right with you. Why don't you stay here for a while? Six months I've been here. No, I can stay now. I, I know the word of faith now. Nothing can move me now. I'm six months here. No, he said, you got to stay. You got to stay. God has another future for you. You got to stay. Then she said, no. Oh, you see, that old church where I used to be, oh, they love me. The, 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 the preacher wants me. She, he's even sent a message for me. All right. Do they believe in all these things that we believe? Uh, yes, but, you know, some things, but yes. And then he said, I don't think you should go. No, I, sometimes I'll come back here when we have, I'll be here. And then Benahim's wife also talked to the woman and said, I don't think you should go. Why don't you stay? Um... I've known this pastor, the, the pastor of that old church for a long time. He's a real man of God. I mean, he's a, he knows I'm here. Anyway, she left and went to that church. When she got there, she was there for about a month only. The pastor had said to her, um, You've been here? Oh, yes. Give the glory to God. The glory belongs to God. You know, whenever your mind is spiritually alert, you get healed. Anybody can be healed when his mind is spiritually alert. He made her believe it was the state of her mind. Faith is personal. When your mind is spiritually alert, you'll be healed. So that's what happened to you. You just got to the time when you were spiritually alert. In other words, you didn't have to be healed in that meeting. You could have been healed anywhere. Anytime your, your spirit is alert. <laughs> Anything can happen. And it can happen anywhere because God's everywhere. And so she thought, ooh. So all that faith thing they've been talking about just, just to get somebody's money or just to get somebody to stay in their church. She believed what the pastor said. Before long. The tummy seemed to have pain. Within a month, the stomach grew larger. All the old symptoms came back. She said, it's not possible. She went for a test. It was cancer. She said, impossible. In one month, I'd been free six months from cancer. She ran to Benny Hill. He said, I told you not to go. What did that pastor tell you? Uh, yeah, he told me that it was in my mind. Oh dear, ain't nothing we can do for you because you lost six months of faith. How are you going to grow all that back? She died. In one month, she died of cancer. After, medical report was clear. That she had been cleansed of cancer. Remember something. Where did the sickness come from in the first place? Why was it possible in the first place? When you receive salvation, you don't go back to your old friends. Hey, yeah, no, 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 no. They know I'm a Christian now, so I, I'm just going to be a witness to them. How are you going to be a witness to them? I'll tell you how. Give them tracts. Give them Christian materials, Christian books and tapes. Tell them about Jesus. After you're talking, fly away. <laughs> they are not to do the talking. You are to do the talking. When you do the talking, go away. Every time you come, you help in doing the talking. And after doing the talking, you get away. What does a child do? A child don't listen to nobody. As long as it's a child, a child says, ah! What is she doing? Commanding everybody to bring food. <laughs> when she's through with the food, if you like, sing. If you like, do what you like. When a child wakes up, 
So the child commands everybody, you do everything for the child. So what? Until, until you are well groomed. Look at the ministry of Jesus. He ministered three and a half years. When did he start sending out his disciples to preach? Immediately they believed in him? No. He taught them and then he sent them. He taught them. He made sure they were strong in the word. And then he sent them. He said, when you go, preach. He didn't say, listen. He said, preach. Don't let them talk to you. Look at Jehovah's Witnesses. I have encountered them. They don't let you talk. I know them. I have met them. They start doing the talking, and then when you want to the answer, they say, no, let me finish. And then when they finish, they open the briefcase and bring out a book and say, this is very important, you have to buy this. Until you buy that book, they will not stop. And when you buy the book, it's bye-bye. When I first got introduced to them, I thought, let the guy talk. When he's through, then I'll start. Because he came. And I thought, all right, you have your chance now. I'll have my chance. Deal, deal. He said, deal, good. I'll talk first. And then he spoke. And when he was done, he opened his briefcase and brought out his book. He said, I had to buy it. I said, I don't need that. Let me finish talking. I want to answer what you said. No, he said, uh -uh. He said, I have the, um, this book is so important, it will answer anything. Hey, if you have a question, it will answer it. If you have it, it will answer it. If, uh, it will answer it. I said, I have to reply to some things. You said, he said, God's word is not to be replied. <laughs> and you know what? He would not stop until I bought his book and I bought it. <laughs> not because I wanted to read it, because I haven't read it till this day. He made me buy it. He wouldn't go until I bought it. <laughs> when I paid for it, he left. <laughs> I had no chance. <laughs> what did Jesus say? The children of this world, he said, they are in their generation wiser than the children of the kingdom. Why? Because they apply the right principles. And we will think, all right, let's be calm, let's be cool, let's be kind. No, brother. When you go to preach, preach, you are not there to listen. They may accuse you that, okay, you don't like to listen to anybody. No, I came to give you God's word. Reply him. Only God. In your prayer time, tell God what you want to tell him. Thank you. <laughs> Before they convince you that what you have is foolish. You were here. All of a sudden, you are back creeping. I don't know what happened to me. I was here, I was here, but I don't know. I was here. Please pray for me. I saw a man some time back. You know, he was gloriously healed, excited, healed in one of our, our crusades. He was healed. The one day I was coming out of the healing school, and I saw him sitting, looking so miserable. And I thought, dear God, what's this? I recognize you. And he was raising his hand for me to pray for him. I thought, no, 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 no. Why? Jesus didn't pray twice like that. He only prayed twice on the same occasion. All right? Not after you've gone and then you come back and again and pray again for the same thing. No, the healing is in you. Go and use it. Go and stand on it. If a sinner received Jesus Christ, and now he's born again. And he's testifying about Jesus. Then after a year, or even less than that, he goes back into sin. Do you call him again to bring him back into salvation from the beginning? No. You don't tell him, uh, after me. <laughs> you, don't, you don't lead him again in the prayer of salvation. He doesn't get born again, again. He is only restored with the faith that was left in him. Because the Bible says in Romans chapter 12 verse 3 that God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. So that measure of faith remains in him. If he ever loses that measure of faith, he will go into apostasy. He will never come back. And that will be useless to try to restore him because you can't. Okay, so how do I know that he has not lost it? You would know. Because he has a feel after God. Can you see that? Sure. So you restore him to salvation. 
You don't try to make him born again a second time. So that healing is in you. So if you are here, any one of you, you got healed before, and you are wishing to pray a second prayer for you, you are wrong. That second prayer will not work. What you do is put what we have put inside you to work. You resist the devil. The Bible says he will flee. You say, I tried. Are you saying God is a liar? How dare you tell me you did what God said and it didn't work? Is God a liar? If God says resist the devil and he will flee, that settles it. If you have done something and the devil didn't flee, you did not resist. He didn't say resist him in your strength. In God's word. In God's word. They are mighty through God. Our, our weapons are mighty through God. Through the word. Through the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. How many of you here are ashamed of Jesus? Are you ashamed of Jesus? Anybody ashamed of Jesus? Are you sure? 